Hey Botsy, this is night on uh, day 15. This is night. I just uh, had to blog real quick. I'm super down and out right now. Um, I just found out that your mom backed out of her deal. It's supposed to be one overnight and two half days. And now it's down to two days with one half day. I just, I'm struggling and now I don't get two and two. I thought month two was supposed to get two overnights and two half days and now I only get two. I talked to her attorney, he told me that was cool, told me that they were going to do that. And now because I unfriended your mom on Facebook, unfriended her on Twitter, she does this. And I only did it because I don't want us to see each other. I don't want us to be involved in each other's lives, but I still want to be involved in yours. It's just, oh, it's so heartbreaking again. Like, part of this moving forward, it means that we both take steps together to try to, like, work things out, to try to show each other trust, to try to show each other that, that I'm missing out on all this time with you that I can't take back. And she knows that. And instead, she continually proves to me again that, that this is vindictive, that she's justified for doing this. And that now two days out of seven days is all I get. Are you serious? And it's just another thing that just that just makes it so hard, Batsy. It makes it so hard to just have faith in your mom. And it makes it hard when she never thinks she does wrong. She's completely perfect and everything is justified. And I'm trying to be as vulnerable, as humble as possible. And it's like it's like it's just one big kick where one second, I miss your mom, and I think, okay, if we keep this up, and I keep showing her I'm not drinking, not smoking, not doing anything, she finds things, and she puts five years worth of frustration and anger, and she punishes me again through you. You're the only thing she has that she knows affects me. But you're the only thing that I'm missing out on your development in your life for 20 months, and I can't see you. I can't see you at all. Two days out of seven days. I do love your mom, and I do want her back. But if there's no compromise, if there's no trust, then, then we might as well separate. And I thought, okay, I'll take that deal. Even though I don't like it, I'll take it. Because I want to show your mom that I want to work with her. And she called it her attorney, her attorney, and she took more. It just sucks, honestly. I don't know what to do. I want to keep positive. I want to move forward. But your mom, she constantly brings up the past, and that's part of our relationship problem. The past is never dead in our relationship at all. It's always right there like hanging out right behind us, you know? And it just never, never goes away. How do you move forward when, when, when no one can let go of the past? How do you move forward when, when you constantly use the past as something that prevents you from trying to live it in the future? You can't, you can't move forward if, if you're constantly holding on to the past and using it as a weapon. And you can't move forward as a, as a family if you're putting your daughter right in between it saying, okay, because I don't like what you did, I'm going to punish you more. This is an important time for me right here. An important decision I have to, to make. The old me would have ripped your mom an asshole. But I don't want to be angry anymore. We can't be angry no more. We're never going to move forward if all we're doing is fighting. <sighs> Last night I sat here missing your mom so much. I text Sammy, like, I want I want to call and tell her to come home right now. But today's a good example of, of how that's just so far away. How everything is still just a weapon, a game. I'm missing out on so much of your life and she knows I can never take that time back. And instead of her just saying, you know what, fine, he's not drinking, not smoking, he's trying to rebuild the company, he's trying to provide for me, I'm going to meet him a little bit. She takes more. God, I'm just struggling right now, Batsy. I'm sitting in this beautiful room that I made for you. I put everything up here of your mom to show her that, that, that I want her when she walks in this door one of these days that, that, that I built this room for her too. And now I'm just to the back, I'm back to day one again where I don't even want to even see her face. I want to pull down all these pictures and just put pictures of just me and you all over it. But that's how the old me would think, that's how the old me would move forward. And I don't want to be the old me. 
I don't want to be the old me about seeing your mom did something that just that makes me so angry again. Two days. And then she changed the time frame. The time frame was supposed to be from the from the day that I first got got served on the 21st. And now it's back to August 1st. That means I have to go three weeks. Three weeks. I'm just, that don't mean anything now. I have to start over. And now wait a month till September 1st to get two days. Her attorney told me everything was good. That she agreed to my time frame. That we'd start it on the 21st. You know, and that means I would only have to do this one and one for 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 just two more weeks. And now I have to go back to scratch again. <sighs> How do we move forward, Botsy, when no one wants to let go of the past? You know, I don't know, honey. Your mom still doesn't see fault in anything, and it's hard because we don't talk. We don't talk at all. You know what we've done, Roxy? Is we've always managed to yell at each other and not back down and always think about compromise as weakness. And that's the truth. Me and your mom are terrible examples of human beings that don't know how to compromise because for us we see compromising as being weak. We see compromising and being vulnerable as a weakness. And it's not actually. I've learned a lot in the past three weeks through counseling and through, through all my substance abuse classes that compromise is what makes you a stronger leader. It's what makes you a better person. I don't know what to do. I thought me and your mom were seeing eye to eye. I thought that we both had decided, you know what, like, hey, even though I don't like her, she doesn't like like me, we don't agree with each other. We both agreed that it's good for you to be in part of our lives equally. That we'd raise you equally, not 80-20. Not, not two days, a week. I'm keeping my word to rebuild this company. I'm keeping my word to be clean, to be sober. I can pass a drug test right now. I can pass a, a breathalyzer right, right now. I don't have the urge to drink. I don't have the urge to smoke. I have the urge to be a father. I have the urge to be a husband. But your mom keeps putting just fucked up things in place, like holding you. What's wrong with me seeing you three times a week? What? What bad does that do? What bad does that do, me seeing you three times a week? If anything, that would help me, and it would help her. It would help us to trust each other. It would help us to see that our child is what bonds us, it's what unites us. It would help us to understand each other and find a place where we can come together and instead, it's just more, more backbiting, more backpedaling, more mean stuff. I'm gonna keep my commitment to you, Boxy. I'm gonna keep improving my quality of life. But this just brings me back three weeks with your, with your mom when I thought, okay, I don't agree with her at all, and I know that she's never gonna admit that, that she's wrong. She's always gonna be justified in her actions. But I'm gonna be the more humble person and take this route. Whatever she wants to, to do, I'll do. And I agreed to her conditions. And then today she sends me an email saying, you only get two days. I talked to her attorney. Her attorney was cool with one day, two half days, and then next month, two days, and two half days. Those half days were gonna be what's carried me over to the overnight days. I need those half days. Because those are the days where I could have you here for five hours. Bring you home, and it would, it would carry me over until the day I had my overnight days. I had this huge plan of how I'd spend that time. And now it's like, dang it. <sighs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling right now with what your mom just did. <sighs> and I want to love her mother. I want to support her. But she's taking clients on, not in the company not supporting me. She did take that, that client on in the company and help me, meet me halfway. Not hog it. It could meet a goal for us. I feel like I'm the only one trying to push forward to save this. I feel like I'm the only one doing everything possible to prove that, 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 that or to even just, like, we're gonna do it together or not. 
It's like your mom has so much resentment and hate that three months isn't going to be a time frame. Like I said today, how I want her back here in three months, but this just pushes us back three weeks, four weeks. I've completely lost that, that, that little shine of, of hope in my heart that like, that there's a possibility that when I sign that paperwork that we can start working on it. Now it's like, oh, she wants to take take on a client but without the com without the company. I'm struggling to keep the company. I'm struggling to, to hit my goal of $2,500. I'm struggling to, 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 to build this room into a place that's love. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to, 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 to keep me in check and all I need is someone to meet me halfway. Someone to just just take a baby step with me and not put more obstacles in place and it seems like your mom is so busy trying to protect herself that she's not trying to, 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 to help us, she's only helping herself. I don't know. I don't know, Batsy. This is just bad news. All around bad. It's all around bad. My fear is is that I put everything into this, and in the end, I, we we still have all this hate, resentment, and frustration. My fear is is that I'm gonna work so hard to save this company, and so hard to fix who I am, that your mom is never gonna move forward, and that we're gonna end up never divorcing, but never getting back together. Just being in a constant limbo. That's what I think. You know? It was weird. The other night I wanted to call her and say, just come home. And and I felt, because I, I was just feeling so lonely without her. And so I came in here and just sat in here and just kind of jammed out. And I didn't want to record it because I didn't want to cry and go, oh no, we come home. But with today's actions, it just reminds me that we are so far away from even even remotely even meeting even halfway. I thought she accepted those terms because she really wanted to move forward. And in her heart, she knows that I need you and I need to be a father. And now, I thought I had three weeks of this one and one doing one day, you know, in like two two half days. Which, to be honest, I don't see the point of it being even supervised if you're doing it overnight. That just doesn't make sense to me. But I thought, you know what? If that's what makes her feel happy, if that's what makes her feel comfortable, let's do it then. But really, what is the point of a supervised if I have it overnight? It doesn't make sense at all. You know? Because overnight's not supervised. I don't understand. I really want... I really want to save everything. I really want to make this work, you know? This whole room is filled with your mom. I wasn't going to put any picture in here at all of your mom, at all. I was going to make this thing a me and you paradise. But that's not right, she's your mom. And when you're here playing during the day, or your half days, I wanted you to see this room and see that it was filled with love from both of us, because we both love you. All I want to do now is just tear every picture down. But I'm not. I just so badly thought we were moving forward. One and one. <sighs> I'm completely down and out right now. It's hard to be with your, your mom. She never admits fault. She never admits wrong. Everything she does is justified. Every action she takes is because she was, it's, it's just justified. And we can't have that in a marriage. I can't have a marriage like that no more. I don't want to always be right. I don't want to always, always stand ground and just be stubborn. That's not how I want to be a father either. I don't want to teach you to be like the way that I was. Being like me, the way that I was, isn't right. Being the way that your mom is, isn't right. You need to be able to be humble. You need to be able to 
to, to know when to quit. You need to know when to back down. You need to know when to pick your fights. You need to know when being submissive is actually a good thing. When it's actually nice to show someone that you care by giving in. Don't be like us, Bati. Don't be like us at all. Don't, don't grow up always having to be the right person. Because you'll have our marriage. You'll have this kind of marriage. You'll grow up being stubborn and stern and, and always thinking that you're right. Or just being just like me and your mom. We're a mirror image of each other. You're going to end up lonely and miserable and constantly in, co in conflict and never open-hearted. I've learned that. Always being right means that your heart's always closed off. Some of the best people in life are, are humble people, people who can admit mistake, people who can admit that they need to, to change, people who always think that they're right, people who always are stubborn, who don't ever admit defeat even when they are wrong, are people who, who, who aren't full people. They're not 100% themselves. And that's what me and your mom are. And that's what I want to change. I don't want to always be right no more. I don't want to always lead the way. I don't want to always say it's my way or the highway. I'm proud that this situation's happened to me to teach me that. I'm not proud of the fact that, that, that it had to happen this way. But it's better now than never, huh? I guess I just wanted to, to vent to you, Botsy. I mean, you are going to see these as you grow older. I'm going to hold on to these forever. And I'm going to keep vlogging every single day for the rest of my life this way, every day. And I want you to see the transformation that happens inside me. And I'm going to be blunt and tell you about what I feel about your mom. She, does, she doesn't watch these at all. She says that she looks at them, but I haven't seen views. So, my opinion, she's not watching these. But that doesn't matter. I don't do these for her. I do these for you so that when you're older, we can look back at this time and we can go over everything that happened to me and everything that took it to be, for me to become who I am 15, 16 years from now when I'm in my late 40s and early 50s and you're in your 20s. I'm sorely disappointed with your mom for backing down out of our deal. But this is an important crossroad for me. I can either get super nasty about it, I can bankrupt the company trying to fucking fight it, I mean, your mom can turn into worst freaking enemies in the world and work together. Because ultimately, if this company goes broke, well, we're both stuck holding the bag of all this debt. But why, when the company's so beautiful? If anything, your mom is a genius. We both lack integrity, but your mother is a genius. I lack integrity, too. I haven't been honest to her in a long time. We haven't both been honest to, e to each other. We both think that we're honest to each other, but then again, we're both miserable. We both have so much hate and resentment and spite inside of ourselves because of things that we've done to each other. The only difference between us is that I don't want to do that no more. I made these vlogs primarily so that I can admit fault, I can admit defeat, and so that I can grow. I'm going to sign your mom's stuff tomorrow and take the higher route. I'm going to miss seeing you five days a week when you're only two miles away. This is miserable. Miserable. I'm going to enjoy those two days that we have together. And even though I'm super bummed that she went back out of that deal. Super bummed. I want to take it and just sign it. And instead, I'm going to utilize those two days, or the one day I get, and the half day supervised for five hours. Hold on. I'm going to take that time to just enjoy my time with you. First, there was no time frame on how long I could see you during, during the half days. Now it's five hours. I so badly want to love your mom again. And I so badly want to fall in love again. I so badly want to court your mom again. I just don't think that your mom is ready to just 
open up her heart and be vulnerable. And I don't think she's ready to open up her heart and see that that you have a father who's sitting two miles away and, and, and she's denying me as much time as humanly possible. But yet, she, but yet instead her justification is I'm doing him a favor. You're not doing me a favor at all by, by ensuring that I see you 20% of the week. Especially when you live two miles away. I'm missing you say words. I'm missing you be curious. I'm missing you do so much. And all I get is 20%. It's not fair. I was so looking forward to the half days, because the half days would carry me over into the full days. I could have you five, six hours during my half days, and I, w I could cook dinner for you, play with you, hang out with you, and then give you back, and then two days after that, get my full day. And it would carry me over. It would it'd make me want to work harder. It'd make me, it'd inspire me to want to love your mother again. It'd make me want to say, okay, Natalie, you, you did this. What do you need from me? Now she takes, tells Sammy, oh, she, she loves me, and it's mad because she loves me but yet punishes me and expects me to love her back. I don't know, man. It's weird, dude. It's weird. I have counseling tomorrow. I have counseling Friday, substance abuse. I have counseling Tuesday, substance abuse Thursday, and counseling on Thursday. Every day I spend it now, the past three weeks, humbling myself constantly, improving who I am, finding ways to, to, to release my frustration and my anger. And this just sets me back like three weeks with how I feel about your mom. And I'm trying as hard as I can to find a positive spin on what has happened. And it's, it's rough and tough hard. It's hard lots here. I have to watch you grow up in my dreams. I'm an amazing father. I do so much. And I love being a father so much. And there's so many de deadbeat dads in the world. And I'm being turned into one. I want you to know that I didn't choose this. I want you to know that, that for all the bad that we've done to each other, I still love your mom. Right now, I don't care too much for her. I probably won't see her until probably October, was when I actually plan on seeing her, is October. And this makes me not want to see her until November, you know? I planned on if she if she met me halfway, I would meet her halfway. And now with her reneging on this deal, I'm just having a hard time. It it just pretty much sets me back to September twenty first. It pretty much sets me all the way back to say, you know what? I need to take a further step back in my heart and close off my heart a small bit more. And then pretty much just wait till like let's say late October, to where we're almost done, and then start talking. I I write her emails, she gets angry. I I try to text her, she gets angry. I I I get clean. I drink an old duel, and she finds excuses. Alcohol, it. yes, zero point zero five percent. That's ten cans of beer to equal one. I'm not drinking it for the alcohol. I'm drinking it so. It, just, just because it's not alcoholic, my hands are used to holding on to things. I've drank 15, 16 sodas in a day. I went through two 12 packs of soda already. You know, your mom doesn't believe in all that. I drink to get over our marriage. It's true. I know that she doesn't believe it. I always drank beer Lavazzi. I always drank beer. I just didn't ever use alcohol as a device to numb pain until our marriage got mad. 
but I've always been drinking beer. I want to be clearly honest on that one, Monty. I've always been drinking beer. I've been drinking beer since I was 16 with your godfather, Nick. But we never used alcohol to numb anything until I met your mom. But she doesn't believe that because she doesn't believe that she does anything wrong. So it's hard. When, when, when I'm honest to myself, I'm honest in counseling. I'm honest to everyone about who I am now. And it's still, your mom has to find a reason to say no. I didn't do nothing wrong to him, so that's not the truth. But that is the truth. That's the absolute truth. Vatsi, I've always drank beer. It just never, ever, ever really became a huge part of my life until I couldn't find a way to deal with your mom. And, and vice versa, your mom couldn't find a way to deal with me, but she didn't take it out in drinking. She, she just started to bottle up all of her anger. We have serious problems, Vatsi. I wish I had the right answers right now, but three months isn't going to work. At this pace, I don't know what's going to happen. I looked forward to signing that paperwork today. I looked forward to everything till I got the email from your mom saying you only get two days. That's ridiculous. I want to keep building up this company, Fatty, and it's going to rock and roll. I'm about to meet my goals for the month in the first week. I'm not going to stop fighting to provide. I'm an amazing provider and a good dad. And I want you to know that. I have fought as good as I can to try to see you as much as, as, as possible. The only reason why you're being denied is because your mom still has so much hate built up inside of me that she uses you as a weapon. I love you. And I miss you so much. And I love your mom. And I miss who your mom and I used to be. I don't miss your mom right now because I, she's still the same person. But I miss who we used to be when we first fell in love. When we'd go for long walks. When we'd kiss and cuddle on the beach. When we'd hold each other all night. When we'd make love in bed and it was awesome. When we'd get up the next day and just cuddle in bed and kiss. I miss those days with your mom. I don't miss who we both have become now. I don't miss us being tyrants to each other. I don't miss us trying to knock each other down. I don't miss us hurting each other. I don't miss any of that about your mom. I miss who we used to be, and that's what I want to get back to. But if we can't start taking baby steps together, we're never going to make it. And I'm doing my baby steps. I'm bringing the, this company back from the brink of being broke. To, to something great again here. And I'm doing everything I can to save everything I possibly can of what we used to be by reinventing who I am. But I gotta tell you about see today it made me lose faith again that your mom is 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 gonna try to meet me even a small bit. And since I know she doesn't watch these things, it's just I have to wait for you down the road to, to, to ultimately see it. In the end though, Batsy, I want you to know that I'm sorry. Me being the man of the family means that I should be the one to humble, to be more humble. And I'm learning what it means to be a leader, which means to be humble, vulnerable, to, to, to compromise to admit defeat, to, to enjoy a victory, to, to do all those things that round us out as human beings, I'm learning now. And it's going on week three and it's good. I have, I have a long time to go, but I'm open for growth. I'm open to change. I'm open to learn. And, and I hope one day that you look back and you see that too. So, this is my midnight, mid, late day blog. You'll get a night blog tonight. So I'm going to find a way to keep positive. I'm going to go smoke a cigar, which is a nice padrone, which is a tip-top cigar. But I really had to get that off of my chest before it just ate at me. And that's why I like these blogs, is that they pro provide me an opportunity to just vent real quick, vent out in the open, be honest with myself, which is important, being honest with myself about who I am and how I actually feel. And so I got that out of me. I'm going to go put my feet in the jacuzzi. I'm going to go smoke a cigar. And I'm just going to hope, 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 hope 
that that the next three months go smooth. But so far, work the first day back to work, the first of August or the first week of, of August was a success today. So I hope tomorrow I'm gonna close a deal tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close one tonight. And I hope that in the end, man, that, that, that you see that I brought this company back. And that when all hope was lost, I turned it around. I'm not going to fail you, either of you.